Welcome back. We're discussing what the results of Venezuela's referendum mean for that country and the region. President Hugo Chavez, who took office a decade ago, could be in power for another decade, or theoretically even longer. I'm joined by Dr. Moises Naim, the former Minister of Trade and Industry in Venezuela, and currently the Editor-in-Chief of Foreign Policy magazine here in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's an interesting thought. Hugo Chavez was one of uh, the most visible critics of uh, U.S. President George W. Bush. And, and I know that you've written uh, about this and said that, you know, he saw the opportunity to position himself as a strong anti-Bush uh, uh, critic. Why did people in Venezuela want to support him on that platform? Well, it's not only Venezuela. Chavez was an early uh, adopter of the notion that uh, bashing uh, President Bush was going to yield uh, international visibility. He, he owes to President Bush and his bashing of President Bush uh, he, uh, part of his international visibility, and he thrived on that. And he also discovered that the price of uh, insulting the U.S. president quite regularly and I'm using the word insulting quite deliberately, mm. uh, was not very high, that he could get away with it. And in fact, it uh, had benefits. And now part uh, the world around Chavez, both at home and abroad, is changing. And one of the things that is changing is that now he doesn't have uh, uh, George W. Bush at the White House, but has Barack Obama. And it's uh, quite uh, a different uh, dynamic there. I'm going to ask you more about that in a second. But let's get John uh, on the line from Paris. John, thank you for your patience. What would you like to ask? Um, good evening. Um, right. Actually, Dr. Naim, you, you uh, jumped ahead of my question. I was just wondering how much uh, of uh, Mr. Dr. President Chavez's support is due to his anti-imperialist and his anti-American stance at home. And secondly, to ask you, uh, he has indeed uh, pushed through a reform so he can run again for election, but isn't it the electorate that will decide if he is re-elected? And if uh, we have a crisis, an economic crisis in Venezuela, they may very well decide to um, vote him out. Yeah, starting with the last part of the question, that assumes uh, that Venezuela continues to be a democracy, and that assumes that President Chavez, uh, once he becomes more embattled uh, because of the longevity of his tenure, because of declining revenues, because of declining uh, um, uh, support abroad, uh, will not reverse uh, to non-democratic means. That's uh, an option. I don't, I'm not sure that that will happen, but it's, that's certainly a, a, a possibility. And yes, uh, President Chavez has become an icon internationally, a very well recognized person because of his quite strident positions, anti-imperialist and anti-American and anti-George W. Bush. Interestingly enough, uh, we had a, a comment, SMS comment from Sweden that came in uh, to the show. It says, unlimited presidency is the rule here in Europe. Uh, no one sees that as dictatorship here. Strange angle to focus on. A president is still elected by the people and can, cha can be changed in the ne next election. Except so. that in Europe, you have very powerful checks and balances. Uh, it's very important to understand that democracy is not elections. Elections are necessary but not sufficient as a condition for democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Europe, you don't have the massive uses of state resources to influence elections. And the other caller the, uh, that had a, a, the question about democracy, aren't the voters uh, going to decide? Yes, the voters are going to decide, provided that uh, uh, the, the, the elections are free and fair and transparent. And again, there is a symmetry of opportunities, power, and resources between the contending uh, parties that are uh, in, in the votes. We get another email. This came in from America, from the USA. Jim, who wrote in saying, in the past, the U.S. has tried to discredit voting in other countries, which resulted in outcomes which have, uh, which, in which it has opposed them and then used that in part as an excuse to attempt to overthrow the resulting government hypocritically via coup and uh, violence. Uh, hopefully, Barack Obama's presidency signals an end to such American attempts to impose its will on other sovereign nations. And I wonder what, for uh, Hugo Chavez, what uh, the, the relationship might be like with Barack Obama. Well, first, it's important to say that not everything that happens in Venezuela needs to be read or seen or understood in light of the relationship with the United States. Mm -hmm. Not everything that has happened in Venezuela uh, was made in Washington. A lot of what ha is happening in Venezuela was single-handedly created, manufactured in Caracas. Uh, and that's not to say that the United States is irrelevant, but it has been proven that uh, Mr. Chavez is far more influential in Caracas and around in, the, in his neighborhood than the United States. President Chavez has been more influential in Latin America than George W. Bush. So mm -hmm. that's uh, the first point. And the second point is the relationship with Barack Obama. He started uh, uh, by saying, President Chavez started by saying that Barack Obama and George Bush had the same stench, that they were essentially the same horrible thing. 
Uh, then yesterday or a few days ago, he said, yeah, but I would be willing to talk to Barack Obama. So we will see how that develops. He also managed to give himself a, a, a sort of a lot of support in the Arab world by uh, taking decisive action on uh, against Israel, uh, you know, uh, breaking ties with Israel because of what happened in Gaza when so many Arab uh, nations didn't. And uh, ironically, it's made him something of a success in the Arab world. So he's, he obviously knows what he's playing, I guess. There is no doubt that uh, President Chavez has a very good instinct to jump uh, at opportunities that uh, create some support for him in some quarters. Now, how much of that uh, has consequences for his voters is another story. We have John in the UK. I'm just going to get him on the line. Uh, John, what would you like to ask? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, what I want to ask is, uh, like you were talking about the results of uh, the referendum in Venezuela. Right. And uh, you relate them to how, I mean, uh, how America saw, we were looking at that as uh, it affects America. Now, I've watched your discussion, your discussions on uh, various topics. Almost everything around the world, you choose to relate to how it affects America, how America influences. Do you, in hindsight, accept in reality that America is influential in the world, both for the positive and the negative, and they are needed in almost every... Forget about what Bush has done, but I think there's a history of the good part of America. Do you accept that fact? And then, two, I mean, when you look at Venezuela, what's happening now, can you say outright there it's good for the good of, Amer of Venezuela or its bad. Okay, I think you've indicated that it's not, not the ideal situation for Venezuela. Though. Well, if you are a Democrat, if you want democracy, if you want uh, a democracy that is vibrant, that has checks and balances, that you don't have a president that controls uh, the National Assembly, the Parliament, uh, uh, the oil industry, the military, and all the powers, and uh, uh, then, uh, you know, that's not a country you would uh, wish to have, right? You want... Uh, how, do you, how do you compare the government you served in with uh, that of Hugo Chavez's now? There was a very strong opposition. There was uh, controls. Uh, there were all sorts of checks. And you didn't know what was going to be the outcome of an election. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for many years, Venezuela had a, a, by part, a two-party system, and uh, it was very hard to know when the election, the, the election ca came. It was very hard to know who was going to win. That's not the case now. Uh, as I said before, President Chavez announced that he was going to win this uh, uh, referendum to extend his term limits, and he did it. And, and John was also asking, I mean, accepting the idea that uh, irrespective of uh, the George Bush era, America still has a role to play. It still has some influence. Oh, there is no doubt, uh, except that uh, 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 the United States uh, has been and will continue to be very distracted by other international priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, Latin America does not loom large in the kind of, of uh, uh, themes that land in the American president desk on decision makers in Washington. You have Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, North Korea, Russia, the relationship with China, the international financial crisis. When you put all of that uh, and then you ask, well, what's the place of Latin America or of Hugo Chavez, then that, that's not a very, very important uh, um, element in, in the conversation in Washington. We have Iraq on the line. Good to hear from Iraq. Karwan, what would you like to ask? After the United States elections and the, I mean, new administration, uh, Obama's administration, could this effect on the uh, Hugo Chavez and the referendum of Hugo Chavez? Okay, we've, we've touched on that to a large degree, the, the impact of the, the Obama administration. I, I just want to quote something you, you said, um, uh, you know, you've written in, in, in some of the, the work you've done. Just quickly on this, you, you say, uh, you talk about the damages inflicted by the cult of personality, institutional devastation, and militarization of Venezuela's political life. What do you see to be those, those damages? In the long term? Yeah, there are long term. There is um, the, the Venezuelan oil industry, for example, uh, was state owned, but was widely recognized around the world as a professionally managed, quite meritocratic, apolitical actor. Uh, President Chavez uh, took it over. Uh, the, he fired about 18,000 technicians, managers, uh, and, and workers that did not support him. Mm. And now the Venezuelan oil industry is no longer uh, uh, admired as a, as a good company. The same happened with the armed forces. It, today in the armed forces, you have to be very explicitly and stridently political uh, mm. to, uh, to, to get uh, so uh, promoted. And so the, the, the meritocracy that is apolitical, that is just based on your competence, is no longer a trait in the public sector in the country. Well, Dr. Moises Naim, I have to thank you very much for being with us. Thank, thank you, you sir. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. And thank you for watching. On the next show, we speak with Mary Robinson, the former President of Ireland and the former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, along with a team of top legal experts, has just published a report criticizing the U.S. and other governments for abusing human rights in their pursuit of the so-called war on terror. We'll see you next time for that. From me and the team, goodbye.